Good afternoon, I'm Paolo Del Rosario. This is Newsfeed. Police and government officials deny allegations of red tagging as they face House lawmakers in a budget hearing. Hannah T. tells us more. Red tagging took center stage in the House budget deliberations for the Department of Interior and Local Government, or DILG. Kabataan Party List Representative Raul Manuel did not hold back and directed questions about red tagging practices by the government. Red tagging, as defined by the Ateneo Human Rights Center, or AHRC, referencing Supreme Court Justice Marvick Leonen, is the act of labeling individuals or organizations as threats or enemies of the state, often a strategy by state agents, particularly law enforcement and military. The AHRC reports that from January to August 2024, there have been 456 red tagging cases in the country. Of these, 450 were conducted online and 75.9% targeted civil society groups, while 18.2% were directed at youth. Most of these incidents were attributed to government sources. I have to, to look po dun sa sinasabi nyo, but ang um, uh, puna natin, we just follow your rules po ng presidente natin. We don't want to red tag anymore. Yun po yung ano. Kung nangyari po yan, I, we have no idea, but I will investigate po kung nangyayari po yan. But, and it's against human rights. Even before na mga predecessor ko, to come up with a red tagging po, wala po kaming uh, issue on sangan ng orders po. Despite PNP Chief Romel Marbil's standpoint, Amnesty International reports that red tagging cases persist under the Marcos administration. For Manuel, the way officials easily red tag ordinary individuals contrasts with the perceived difficulty of the police in arresting high profile figures like Alice Go and Apollo Kibuloy. DILG Secretary Ben Abalos defended the agencies and highlighted ongoing collaboration with the Bureau of Immigration and National Security Agencies, particularly in relation to Kibuloy's case. With due respect to the Congressman uh, Manuel, it is never the policy of the PNP to read that. In fact, dinimanda po kami on record. Nakadimanda po ako ngayon ang PNP Dahil sa pag po namin sa Kingdom of Jesus. Additional scrutiny fell on the Barangay Development Program by the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or NTFL-CAC, a task force created by former President Rodrigo Duterte to bring sustainable development to conflict-prone communities. Discrepancies emerged between the PNP's report of 841 completed BDP projects, but NTF-LCAC's website only showed over 600 projects. Manuel then called to defund the task force. Hannah T. Billionario News Channel. Senate President Francis Escudero denies there is a rift between him and President Bongbong Marcos. On Billionario News Channel's At the Forefront, Escudero said their differences in some issues are proof of a healthy democracy. Agatha Gregorio reports. Senate President Chis Escudero quashes rumors a rift is brewing between the President and the Senate. Word of the possible tiff sprung after the Chamber and the President issued conflicting positions on the Public Transport Modernization Program. In an interview over at the forefront on the Billionario News Channel, Escudero said it's just what can be expected in a working democracy. On the part of the President and the Senate, no, Karen, there is no gap, there is no misunderstanding. It's just, as you said, democracy at work. A resolution by the Senate called for the suspension of the PTMP until all issues over the program are resolved. President Bongbong Marcos quickly rejected the idea, saying the PTMP had already been postponed many times and that 80% of jeepney drivers and operators have already complied with the program. Escudero says it was not the intention of the Senate to stop the program. The resolution only covers those who have not consolidated their franchises yet. The hearing was generic. The resolution was drafted that was drafted was generic as well. But this is the intention of the Senate. I, this is clarified with Senator Tulfo, the chairman of the committee, as well as every senator who signed, that that is the intention of the Senate. Even those who consolidated, even those who are in favor of modernization, also have some complaints, a lot of them actually, which needs to be addressed as well, which we will take up with the secretary. 
Dowsing rumors of a rift further, the Senate president made it clear that he agreed with President Bongbong Marcos's so-called stronger stand in asserting the country's claim over the West Philippine Sea. I also agree with his position that um, this should not lead to war. The president has been very patient in spite and despite provocations from China um, not to allow this to go, um, to, to go beyond a certain line that will most likely lead to war or um, worsening of relations between the Philippines and China. Escudero also clarified the Senate's plans for special non-working holidays. That's after his statement on limiting these went viral, as some interpreted this as cutting the number of holidays. The logic of the Senate's position is this. We don't want to add to the holidays, but we will not subtract or deduct from the existing holidays. That is a long debate that will probably take decades um, to um, discuss or settle. And when asked to assess the Marcus administration, the lawmaker gave this rating out of 10. I think a 6 or a 7, um, Karen. And I think even if you ask the president himself, he'd rate himself um, close to that number simply because um, it's barely halfway through his term and um, he still has four years and a long way to go. I think he himself um, sees things, a lot of things still needs to be done. And the first three years, first half of any president's term is usually spent laying the foundation. Escudero later said he agrees with points brought up by the chief executive during the State of the Nation address, as there is still room for improvement like lowering the prices of basic commodities. But moving to the vice president, it came as no surprise to Escudero that Sara Duterte criticized the government, particularly on the lack of a flood management master plan. Everybody's expecting that already, that she'll start to hit government, will be um, leading the opposition, so on and so forth. But some of the criticisms initially hurled by the vice president against the president are um, unfair to say the least because the president has been in office for only two years. Now, um, if the previous administration, his father, her father, who sat for six years, was not able to come up with one for six years, then why expect um, the president to come up with one in um, two years? As for his own political plans, the Senate president is firm. He has no plans of moving higher up in government. I ran already, been there, done that. Agatha Gregorio, Billionario News Channel. Thailand's parliament elects a new leader. Peitong Tan Shinawatra, the heir of Thailand's polarizing political heavyweight, Thaksin Shinawat, becomes the country's youngest prime minister. Her election came two days after Sreta Tawbasin was ousted in a coup. She is the fourth member of their family to serve as Prime Minister. Her father was ousted back in 2006, but has remained hugely influential. The 37-year-old's ascent to power comes at a chaotic time in Thailand, given the country's floundering economy and her party's dwindling popularity. Sweden confirms its first case of the more severe strain of MPOX. Swedish health authorities say the man was infected while staying in a part of Africa where there was a large outbreak of the disease. He is now receiving care. The WHO has declared MPOX a global public health emergency, the second time in two years after an outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo spread to nearby countries. Philippine shares jump a day after the central bank cut interest rates for the first time in nearly four years. The PSE index breached the 6,800 level as it rises by over 2%. All indices closed in the green, with the services gaining the largest at more than 3%. Total value turnover rose to 7.1 billion pesos. Advancers edged decliners 134 to 68. And those are the news this hour. I'm Paolo De Rosario. Stay tuned to BNC for more top of the hour news on Free TV Channel 31 and also on our website, bnc.ph. Millionaria News Channel, always on top. Good afternoon.